what are you what are your three tips yeah no, hopefully um this has come out in the conversation today but my first one is um you need to do the role that you're in really well because you never know who's watching and, and where it might lead uh, but equally don't forego I guess those external networks and that you know don't make it all internal make sure that you are getting external view on things so you know make sure you engage people outside of your industry and your organization to understand some of the things that they're facing because there could be some real learnings that you can bring into your role so at its core you need to do your core, your role well and be successful in it but i think that that external focus as well really helps that so yeah don't don't trade off one for the other because I, I think i was guilty of that for chunks of my career mm -hmm. and now looking back i sit there now after learning the last couple of years and say Actually, I could have done my role that much better if I'd mm, done that. Mm. So I think that's one. Um, two, I think it's um, I think you need to be honest with where you are. So um, in terms of your skill sets and where you want to go. So I think I don't think you ever have to say that is my one and only role that I want. If you have that, fantastic. But if you don't, you have a direction you want to go to. Then it's about what skill sets do I broadly need to be successful um, there. And then I think if you can be honest in terms of okay, what skill sets do I have versus what do I need and then start to work through it. I think that's really important. And as I said, my general ethos was, I'm never gonna have 100% of things for the role, but I'm a conservative person. So I wanna make sure I bring something to the table with the new role, as well as take something away from the role as well. Yeah, it's, um, so, it's so good to have that. Um, it's, it's a tough thing, isn't it? To have yeah. that kind of room of mirrors, look at yourself and go, what do I enjoy? What am I, what am I really good at? Yeah. And I think I see a lot of people through their careers aspire to be a CFO and we meet them and we, you're like, you're never gonna be a CFO. Mm. Um, yeah. And, and it just causes, I think, heartache, disappointment and potentially bitterness. Yeah. But if you kind of have a lens where you go, you know what, yeah. I'm really good at this. Yeah. I've got to be happy with that. Yeah. I want to continue to grow, but, yeah. but there's certain limitations potentially, or I need to do something about it. Yeah. But if you have that realisation, I think it puts you in a much happier space. Yeah. And, yeah. and I think you'll generally get roles that you enjoy more because all yeah. of a sudden you're doing the things that you, that you, you like. enjoy. Yeah. 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 Um, so yeah. I think that's really important to understand that. And for me, for instance, it was, for me, as an example, one realization was I like the commercial element of my role. So yeah. do I want to do a CFO gig that, that's that got treasury and those sorts of things? Maybe right now, no. Yeah. I want to do a role that I can you know enjoy those commercial elements. So for yeah. me, you know, it was really important, I guess, to have that realization. And it'll be different for different people, but for me, that was important. So I think it's been really clear of what directly what you want to do, where you're at, what you've got and what you need. Yeah. Um, yeah and I think just being honest with yourself, that little internal voice is, is really important. Yeah. Um, and then the last one I think is, is balance. Um, and what I mean by that is if you want to bring your best self to work, um, if you want to, um, you know, drive the best outcomes that you possibly can, then I think you really need to have balance. And, and for me, what balance represented to me really varied through my career. So at, at the start, when it was just me, um, it was, you know, I played rugby, did work uh, and saw my family every now and then. And that was as in my, you know, my brothers and sisters and so yeah, on. Yeah. But as I got older and I got a family, um, you know, things got different, like there was different priorities and, and things worked differently. So, you know, for me, it's really about that balance. And I think if you can do that, um, it means when you get to work, when you are at work, you'll mm. do the job that much better and you'll make that much bigger an impression. Um, another learning for me is about, it's important for me to segment my, my, I'm not one of those people that can sort of do a bit of work, do something else, come back to work and do it over the seven days. I'd much prefer to go nail it over the five days of the week and then have the weekend yeah. to refresh regenerate time with my family and then when I, I know when I come to work on Monday I'll be ready to go mm, again mm. Um, and that was a real learning because earlier on I would just do work all the time and wonder why I was tired when I came back from the weekend on Monday and it was just because I hadn't you know I hadn't really been honest with myself as to what I needed to do my best my best work so yeah, having that downtime yeah so yeah. I think for me that balance um, and the role of sport yeah. and the role of family and those yeah. sorts of things for me um, was really important. So I'd really stress that. And I, I guess COVID has been a really good lesson in that for a lot yeah. of people in terms of, you know, the flexibility that that's probably come about in a lot of people's roles. Yeah. Um, but, but I think it's something that, um, you know, that balance part is really important. Mm -hmm.